Well, the command side task is going to help us to execute code in Node via the task plugin event. Okay, so I wanted to well present you the documentation here, the official one, and here we have some examples. I want to uh, well reproduce a, a couple of them just to make sure that you understand the concept. And I know you can come here and read it. However, there are people like me who may want to see a video about it, right? So uh, you can check this video, you can watch it, and then you can come here and check the official documentation as well. You can read it all because you can see a lot of examples, notes, and rules. That's amazing, and I just wanted to say that. I also wanted to tell you guys that, well, uh, I'm part of the Cypress Ambassador team, right? And it's an honor, and they have sent me a beautiful gift. Let me show you this. It's a t-shirt, right? As you, as you can see over here, the Cypress Ambassador t-shirt. That is amazing. It is beautiful. And I just wanted to say thank you very much to Ronald, to the Cypress team. I appreciate it too much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Side task command does and how it works okay um okay it is going to help us to execute code in node via the task plugin event you can see uh, some examples of the syntax here and you can see that it can receive the event right and also arguments and options okay so here we have a new such and a correct usage example i want to use it for explain you how it works um with a practical example. So I'm going to copy this task and I'll be pasting this in um, a new a JS file that I have in the framework, right? You can see that I'm using a side task command here and it is receiving a couple of parameters in the in the command. The first one is going to be the event name, right? Right. This is the event name. We can call this with other names as well, right? By default, the example is telling us luck but I can modify that by my luck, right? There is no problem with that. You can define the event name that you need, right? The second parameter is gonna be argument. I'm sorry here, I'm having some syntax issues. <laughs> the arguments and here we have a simple string, but you can also send an object if you have multiple values to send to this, the task event, okay? All right, now that we understood this and we know that the parameters here are the event name and the arguments, we need to define this in our cypress.config.js, okay? Where under the setup node events, okay? So I'm gonna copy the code that Cypress is uh, giving us in the official documentation. And let me explain you what is happening here, okay? You can see that it is using the on task because we're referencing the task plugin event handler okay and it can return a value or a promise all right uh, the command will fail if undefined is returned right or if the promise is resolved with undefined okay but also it is telling us that if you do not need to return a value we can explicitly return no to signal that the given event has been handled, okay? So, as you can see, in the example here, we're returning no, all right? Because, well, we're telling Cypress that um, we do not need to return a value, okay? That's amazing. Now that we know that um, I can execute this command, okay? I'm gonna save it and you're gonna see an error. Why? The reason of this error is because the side task well, there is no error for some reason uh, because I haven't saved this. Okay, there it is now. You, you see an error here. And the error is telling us that the side task, my lock, right, was not handled in the setup node events. The reason of this is because, well, I changed the lock command to my lock in the side task definition, right? Do you remember that in my code? Here it is. But now if I come here to the cypress.config.js, I also copied and pasted the task from as, as it was in the example, right? But the lock name or the event name has to be changed to my lock, right? In the cypress.config.js. So I'll do it. My lock. There it is. Now, if well, the Cypress uh, framework is refreshed, you're going to see a new command executed here, which is my lock, okay? And also you can see the console lock in the terminal here because it is running a node, right? You can see a console lock message and the message is this will be output to the terminal. You can see it over here. 
or we can say hello masters for example <laughs> hello masters and it is gonna be in the terminal as well because we're handling uh, we're, we're using code via node right using the task looking event handler okay uh, in this particular case, as you can see, we are not returning anything. We are, we are returning null, right? And if I explore the task command using the console here, you're going to see that the yielded is null because we're not sending or assigning anything to it. However, we can return something. Could be the message itself, right? Let me show you this, okay? I'm going to run this again. And you're going to notice that as soon as the, the task is executed, here we have a yielded, hello masters. And I can perfectly use that yielded value in our test, right? Using the then command, right? Okay, as you remember, then enable, enables you to work with the subject yielded from the previous command, okay? And I can use, uh, well, the, the response, the message to... I don't know, maybe you use, use Psylock, right? And and just print the message in our test runner, right? There it is. Here we have the lock of the yielded message that uh, we're well, returning here in our Cypress config. I can prove you that this is the, well, the message or the return, the yield, because I can say yielding the message here. Right, and now the console, the the Psylog should, uh, well, provide us the yielding hello masters here. Okay, I think that you understand the basics now of how the side task works, right? And now we can come here and check some of the examples. I want to show you a couple of them, and I think that you now understand the logic. Let's continue. All right, masters, let's see the one of the examples that I have here uh, in the official documentation and it is return the number of files in the folder, okay? So I'm gonna copy just the code that I have here, right? To show you a um, wild example and how it works, okay? So I'm gonna create a new it in my describe and it is gonna be a counting number of files, okay? So I'm just gonna open here the second argument and I'll be pasting the side task that I have here, right? That's good. So um, let's imagine that I wanna do a side lock to access the count number that this task is gonna return, okay? Let's understand what is happening in this function. We're just creating a new side task, right? With the event name count files. So this is an event that we need to create in our cypress.config.js, right? And the second parameter is a simple string as well, right? And this is going to be probably the path, right? For example, um, where where we want to count how many files are inside of this downloads folder, right? And then it is it should return a number probably, right? To see, um, well, to, to count how many items is inside of the Cypress uh, downloads folder, okay? Now we have to go back to our cypress.config.js of course that we're gonna have an issue because we haven't declared this, the side task in our framework. And I can copy the new uh, event here, right? The, yeah, this one over here. I think that this is the new event that I need to copy. And I can declare it in the same on task, right? Just have to declare another uh, event, which is, and its name is gonna be count file files, okay? Uh, you can see that this is the event name, right? Count files, and it is receiving the folder name as parameter, right? Um, okay, what is happening inside of this task? If I open this, it is gonna return a new promise, okay? And it, it is gonna require, um, well, uh, a constant at the beginning of our example. I'm gonna copy it over here, and I'm gonna paste it. And the FS is basically a module that enables interacting with the file system in a way modeled on the standard uh, POSIX functions, okay? And to use the promise-based APIs, here we have an example, examples, but well, that's basically what it's gonna uh, do, right? It, it, it is gonna help us to interact with the file system, all right? So uh, in simple words, it is gonna use the function uh, read directory, right? And it is gonna return 
um, well, if the promise is resolved, uh, the files, okay? And we can access the property length, right? Because the files is gonna be probably an array, right? And we can see how many files in the array do we have in our folder. In simple terms, that's what is happening over here, right? And it, as you can see, uh, well, if the function returns with an error, we're gonna have a failure, of course, right? That's amazing. We're, um, well, covering our packs using the, the task over here. So I think that that's it. I can perfectly create a, uh, an example for you, okay? Here we have an error because um, we, do not, we do not have the Cypress downloads folder created, okay? Here we have an error. But if I create it in our Cypress folder, downloads folder, right? You're gonna see that now, if I run this again, now we do not have an issue because we do not have any um, file in that folder. It is returning zero. But if I create a couple of files here, like test.js and test.ts, now if I run this again, you're gonna notice that it is returning two, right? And I can make an assertion of these two just to have fun, right? <laughs> we can come here in the side task, right? side.js and I can do an assertion like expect I don't know maybe right expect and the count um, uh, what is the name count yeah I can access the count which in this particular case is two right and I can make an assertion to be equal number two right there it is and you can see the assertion working as expecting here Right. Hey guys, let's review the next example, which is how to save a variable across non-same origin URL visits, okay? Let's let's uh, read what they are telling us. When visiting non-same origin URL, Cypress will change the host of the URL to the new URL, whipping the state of any local variables. We want to save a, a variable across visiting non-same origin URLs. We can save the variable and retrieve the saved variable outside of the test using site task as shown below. Okay. Let's understand what is happening in the example. In the first it, we're visiting this um, this website, mywebapp.com. Then it is getting the href attribute from an a tag. Okay. So basically a link, right? And what is happening here is that it is saving the the href in a variable, but using a task, okay? And then in the other it, it is gonna be visit, it is gonna be visiting the, the what? Well, the non-same URL, because probably the URL that we have in the a tag, it's about another web application, and it is not the same origin, okay? Let's do it, okay? I'm gonna emulate that environment. I'm not gonna be visiting anything, but I can we a need here saying uh, saving uh, an href, okay? And that's it. I'm gonna create a function here just to work with Cypress inside. And I'll be creating this task set href, okay? And of course that the href is gonna be, I don't know, we can copy and paste the, the example, right? Another web application. That's going to be the variable that I want to save. And then I want to create another it, right? Where I can get the saved href, okay? Um, this is going to be a narrow function. And inside I can, well, copy and paste this, right? I'm going to be getting the href that I saved before, right? In the other it. And instead of doing a side visit, I want to do a side lock. Okay, that's great. I hope that you get the idea, right? And, and now I can configure the task say, set href and get href in my um, cypress.config.js, right? I need to create um, a couple of new events, right? This one over here. Okay, I'm going to copy and save them over here. And you can see that I need to also create a variable at the beginning of the file to save the value, right? There it is. So you can see that when I call the set href uh, 
well, event, it is going to receive a, bail, a value, right? And it is going to be capable to um, save the value in our href. And then um, when I want to get that, I just return the, the variable itself with the assigned value. That's amazing. Now, let's do it. Okay, so, uh, I can run the example and you're going to see that, well, I'm doing that. You can see that if I inspect the saving, the href, right? Uh, you can see that I'm yielding the, the value because that's what I'm doing in the definition, right? And I am saving already the, the value in the href uh, variable. And then I'm getting, right, the href. Actually, you can see that it is not receiving a, 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 a parameter. So we're using another variation of side task here. You can see that I'm only sending one parameter, the, the event itself. And uh, that's it. I'm just grabbing the href because the config.js is returning the href itself, the string, and I can access the, the yielded object over here. You can see another web application that was, well, I, that I got from the other it over here. And that's beautiful. I love it. What do you think about it? Do you like it? That's amazing. As I'm telling you, come here, check how you can read a file, how you can return a promise from an asynchronous task, and, and so on. Here we have some notes, task must end, tasks are merged automatically, and so on. I, I recommend you that you come here, um, understand what is what all the requirements, assertions, and timeouts. And as always, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction about this beautiful command. I hope that you get the idea. Thank you very much, you guys, for taking the time to watch this video and see you in the next one. This was your media masters. Bye.